All right. Uh, this is, I believe, lecture number 21 or 19. I can't quite remember. Or maybe 20. Um, so in this lecture, we're going to actually start a uh, start and finish <laughs> uh, a new topic, uh, and we'll discuss pretty powerful test uh, which allows you to compare several populations together simultaneously in one quick test. And when I say several, I mean three or more populations. Okay, so uh, the uh, name for this topic is Analysis of Variance, or abbreviated ANOVA. AN comes from Analysis, O comes from OF, and VA variances. Analysis of Variances. So, so it is the technique that allows uh, to compare, um, on the slide it says two or more populations, of interval data, but in actuality, uh, the primary use of this test is when I have three or more populations together. Because as we saw before, several lectures ago, um, we have special set of tests when we're comparing two populations, right? So if this uh, popula if if the samples come from the um, categorical data, then we're using Z test for proportions P1 minus P2. If uh, samples come from numerical data, then we have t-test for uh, independent samples or matched pairs. Uh, if uh, samples or their differences are normally distributed, but if they're not normally distributed, then we have a bunch of tests that are called non-parametric. We will discuss actually a few lectures down the road. Okay, so the primary use of analysis of variances is um, it's reserved for the cases when you have three or more populations of interval data. Okay, so uh, it's very powerful test. It's uh, it's used a lot actually, and I'm going to give you a little back break, uh, kind of little uh, background how the test was used, how it it all started, and uh, an important thing to remember is that analysis of variances ANOVA applies only to interval data. Uh, that means uh, numerical, right? So your samples, uh, three or more different samples, should come from their respective populations and they should be real measurements, okay? So, uh, and the uh, test, ANOVA, is uh, really uh, looking into comparing uh, the populations, the actual populations means, okay? So, um, therefore the assumption is that uh, we're going to uh, collect a bunch of samples, it's actually uh, on my next slide, right? And how many different populations I can have? As many as I want. In general, it's K populations, okay? Let me uh, give you a little bit of the background, as I promised, right? Uh, how the test originated, how the test started. The test actually started in the early 20th century, in 1900s, okay? Um, and the uh, the test actually was invented uh, from the practical need, uh, from agriculture specifically. So um, here is basically the story. Um, back then, about 120 or so years ago, the United States and a lot of other countries for that matter, uh, the economists were agriculture based. So right now, for example, uh, we don't have uh, that much of the problem, right? With exception of few regions of the world, such as Africa, uh, food is not really an issue anymore, right? So we can easily produce uh, enough food in order to uh, support the uh, consumption, okay? Uh, about 100 years ago, that was not the case. Uh, a lot of uh, regions of the world actually struggled and therefore um, people working in the agricultural area, farmers, for example, they really had a problem how to make uh, the, uh, how to grow the largest crops. So, uh, and uh, it was not secret at that point that, you know, crops grow when you uh, provide specific nutrients. So if you fertilize the soil, but what exactly is the best fertilizer? Because there are different forms of fertilizers, right? There are sulfates, there are nitrates, there are phosphates, uh, so which fertilizers give you the best amount of crops? That was the big question. So, uh, therefore, what was happening actually is um, statisticians that were dealing with agriculture, with the yield of crops, 
here's what they did. Um, they uh, performed uh, different, uh, they performed the following experiment. They said, okay, let's, let's take uh, a big field, okay? In fact, several fields. As many as we have different types of uh, fertilizers, okay? So the number of fields can be, the K number of fields can be really anything, K populations. And let's uh, plant the same crops, for example, corn, okay, or wheat, or soy, something like that. And uh, let's apply different types of fertilizers to different fields and let's see what the yield is going to be, okay? So let's say the first field was uh, treated with phosphates, second field was treated with sulfates, uh, next field was treated with nitrates, etc., etc. Okay, so each field received a different chemical treatment. And how do we compare the yield? Well, traditionally, what we do is we say, okay, let's take uh, a standard area in the field. So fields can have different shape, they can have different amount of land, right? So in order to have a fair comparison, what seems to be, uh, uh, what seems to make sense is if we are going to uh, take a standard area of land such as for example 10 feet by 10 feet okay and and you understand that when we plant crops right how do we do that well these days machines do that right so we basically run a tractor down the field and there is like a special uh i guess seed distributor right that sparkles you know seeds into the into the into the soil uh but back then the seeds were planted by by hand largely right so people with like a bucket filled with seeds they were just walking the fields and just throw the seeds on the ground that's how it was done okay so uh could it be that uh you know uh the amount of crops that you're going to collect from each you know plot of land will depend on how the seeds were distributed in this manual process yeah it's totally possible right so the seeds were planted kind of, uh, maybe not exactly uniformly, right? Somewhere the density was higher, somewhere the density was lower. So it was all kinds of variability in this process because it was manual largely. And therefore the statistician said, okay, so let's do this, uh, uh, the following thing, okay? Let's take a field and let's randomly uh, kind of take plots of land, let's say 10 feet by 10 feet, okay? And from each field, for example, let's say we're going to get 50 of these uh, patches, 10 by 10, okay? So for each patch of land, we're going to collect all the crops from this 10 by 10 patch, right? And therefore, each field will give us like a column of numbers, really, right? By weight, okay? That's how primarily we measure the output, the yield, right, of the crops. We're going to measure um, how much weight in terms of pounds we collected from each um, patch of the of the land 10 feet by 10 feet okay so let's say just for the argument's sake we're going to get 50 different patches for the field so therefore each field treated by a specific chemical will give us 50 numbers right how much crop we're going to collect from the 10 by 10 uh, area of of land in this field and we're going to collect 50 patches yields uh, from field treated with phosphates, field treated with nitrates, field treated with sulfates, and whatever else, right? So, um, and since the plots, these uh, patches of land were of the standard size, whatever we agreed upon, right, 10 by 10, for example, then we're going to say, okay, uh, let's calculate the average, right? So how do you compare the, the yields, right? Obviously, if you look at different patches, you're going to uh, get uh, different yields, even from the same very field, right? Again, it depends on probably how densely the seeds were um, planted in the soil. Uh, maybe, you know, uh, some areas of the field got more water than other areas of the field, so it depends on how you provided, you know, how you water the field. Maybe some, uh, areas of the field were hit by insects and parasites, right? They were eating the crops. So there are all kinds of factors that were uh, affecting the results, right? So there was a variability from patch to patch. The weight of the crops that you are going to collect was different, right? 
But what we want to do is we want to say, okay, we understand that there is variability, right? From the same field, 10 by 10 uh, uh, patches of land, you're going to get different amounts of crops, different weights, right? But can we compare the averages? And that's what basically uh, the whole game was about, okay? And if we can compare the averages against each other, we can kind of see, uh, does it even matter uh, which fertilizer you use? Or does it not matter? Okay, and that's basically where the uh, ANOVA test was created. So the idea behind ANOVA test is we have populations, right, that we want to compare. In my example with agriculture, populations are just simply fields that were treated with different types of fertilizers, right? And uh, supposedly, each type of fertilizer, each treatment, will give you well different means or maybe not different we don't know right but certain mean right certain mean yield from the standardized uh, plot of land 10 by 10 for example right and what we have if you have like k different fertilizers you have k different results right uh, k different uh, yields from k different treatments and uh, the idea was that we want to find out if uh, uh, if if some fertilizers are better than other fertilizers, right? But if you're uh, if you have, um, let's say for example, uh, ten different fertilizers, how many different pairwise comparisons do you need to perform? We can perform we can compare them one against another, right? So uh, if you have ten different fertilizers, here's what you need to do: first fertilizer you need to compare against nine others. That's nine comparisons, right? Uh, next one number two we already compared with one so you have eight remaining comparisons etc etc okay so the more different fertilizers you are using the more treatments you're using uh the more comparisons you have to uh to perform moreover each comparison uh, uh remember when we discussed uh hypothesis testing and each time when we test hypothesis there is a possibility to reject the true null in favor of alternative okay so in other words type one error so each time when you perform the hypothesis test the results are not guaranteed right there is still a possibility that you uh, are making an error uh, uh, during your hypo hypothesis test and the more fields you're comparing so let's say that each each test has a five percent chance of being incorrect right if you're using five percent significance level Really, 5% significance level is exactly that, right? There is a 5% chance that we, that whatever conclusion that we're making from the hypothesis are going to be actually wrong conclusions, okay? There is always a chance of that. So, the more tests, pairwise tests, one field against another field, one treatment against another treatment you're doing, the higher the possibility of an error, right? So, therefore, you can't really compare, like, for example, I don't know, 10 or 20, um, fertilizers against each other because at least one of these comparisons probably is going to give you an error right okay so there were a lot of issues with comparison them one against another and therefore statisticians started to think about okay let's actually invent a test that will allow us to perform just one test and compare multiple different treatments against each other multiple different fields treated with different chemicals and actually because because uh this whole uh, test came out of agricultural needs. Uh, uh, field number one was treated with chemical number one. Field number two with chemical number two. So different populations corresponded to different treatments. So uh, exactly after that application, after the test was kind of officially inducted in the Statistical Hall of Fame and became a standard part of the statistical tool set, different populations just um, remembering that it all came from the agriculture different populations are called different treatments or also different levels of the same factor right so in the agricultural example the factor is the fertilizer and fertilizer number one two three four k they're just factor levels one two three four five or treatments one two three four five okay so that's a little bit of terminology okay so uh, Again, the idea is that we're comparing the averages, right? The uh, thinking behind this test was that we have a bunch of fields treated with different chemicals, and what we want to compare is um, the mean yield for each treatment, 
from each field. Right? What is the main yield of the crops from the standard plot of land? Okay. So, and here is the irony of this uh, of this test. Okay. Uh, earlier, at the beginning of the semester, we all discussed that uh, the central location of the data and the variability of the data are two independent characteristics that basically uh, give you the idea about the data distribution, right? Central location, such as means, give you uh, the position of the center of the data, center of gravity. The variance, or standard deviation, measures of variability, uh, give you an idea of how inconsistent or different from each other the values in your sample are, right? So therefore, they're kind of they're supposed to be independent because they they characterize completely different aspects of the distribution. Okay. Well, in this test in ANOVA, uh, they're kind of blended. Okay. So we're using uh, variance uh, or expression that looks like variance to check if the means are the same or not. So kind of th this test blends the the boundary between the central location and and the variability of the data. Okay, so we're using variability, like expression, in order to test central locations. So in, in this regard, this is a weird test. Okay, so uh, here is what the analysis of variances test that we're going to uh, look at um, checks always. Okay, analysis of variances is uh, answering the question. Are the population means the same or not? That's the only thing that uh, ANOVA does. Okay, so in other words, <coughs> if if the coming back to the agriculture example, right? If different treatments for the field give you the same uh, average yield for each field, so in other words, there are no differences. ANOVA test will tell you exactly that there are no differences. Okay, statistically. The, the yields that you will get from field 1, 2, 3, 4, K, right? They're the same. So it doesn't matter what you use. You can use sulfate, phosphate, nitrate, whatever else. It's all the same, right? If, if yield is going to be the same, regardless of the treatment. But if there are differences, let's say, for example, nitrates will give you a larger uh, yield compared to the rest of them. Or maybe all of them will have different yields, right? So, for example, sulfates will have the lowest yield, uh, phosphates higher yield, and nitrates highest yield. Okay, then ANOVA will tell you treatments will result in different averages. That's all that it will tell you. Okay, so but uh, it will not tell you that nitrates are best, phosphates are second best, and sulfates are the third best or the worst treatment, right? So uh, ANOVA uh, will not tell you which treatments are the best, which treatments are the worst, and which treatments are in the middle. Uh, it will tell you, are treatments all the same in terms of the averages, or are they not the same? Some are different from the others, and that's it, okay? So uh, it's, it's like, it's, it's from this uh, standpoint, uh, ANOVA is very similar to the test that we looked at um, two lectures ago, okay? So, when we discussed the chi-square test for the uh, goodness of fit, remember I told you that the chi-square test, goodness of fit test, uh, is like a smoke detector, right? So, when the smoke detector goes off, it tells you that there is somewhere the, uh, somewhere there is a fire, okay? But it's not going to pinpoint a location for you, okay? So, example that we used was distribution of market shares after the advertising. Is it the same as before advertising, or is it, did it change? And the answer was that it did change. Now, how exactly it changed? Company A gained the share, B lost, or maybe A lost and B gained. Maybe they both lost and other companies gained. Doesn't tell you, right? It just tells you. Yes, there was a redistribution of the market shares, but what exactly happened, I'm not going to tell you. ANOVA is pretty much exactly the same in this regard, okay? Uh, the answer that it will give you is, are the treatments all the same? The averages are the same. Or are they not the same? Which ones are better? So if you find that they're not the same, that would be our alternative hypothesis, then it will not tell you which is higher, which is lower, which is in the middle, which ones are different. It will just tell you 
they are not the same some are different from the others that's it okay so from that standpoint it's very similar to chi square goodness of fit test okay so uh let's go ahead and uh yeah so terminology we already discussed right so this is a fancier way to say what i already told you new new terminology right population classification criterion what is common between different populations is called a factor for example right what was common between population one two three four in the agriculture example is that population one was treated by a fertilizer first type second field was fertilizer number two phosphates then this was nitrates fertilizer number three right what's common among them uh is all different types of fertilizers so this is a factor okay so what's common between all three populations is they're all treated with a fertilizer but uh difference between population one two three four five k is the type of fertilizer right so therefore uh phosphates the first one was uh, a factor factor level number one phosphate so treatment uh, uh fertilizer level number one phosphates and fertilizer level number two nitrates fertilizer level number three um what's that sulfates right so uh different populations are called factor levels or treatments again that comes from um the terminology comes from the agricultural application because we considered fields treated with different fertilizers each separate sample was was a separate treatment or factor level okay all right so one way ANOVA the reason why it's called one way is because that's the only example that we're going to consider in our uh, in our um, uh, lecture today is samples that you collect are independent from one another so essentially you're treating if uh, one factor such as fertilizer does one factor fertilizer affect the uh, the outcomes okay so because we, we considered only one factor so one way ANOVA is sometimes also one factor ANOVA, okay? So the only factor in the agriculture study was fertilizer, right? Does the fertilizer affect the yields? And then we had different uh, treatments, phosphates, nitrates, um, sulfates, etc., etc. And uh, uh, so uh, therefore, that's why it's called one way ANOVA. There's only one factor, okay? And samples have to be taken uh, from different fields, uh, uh that, that are taken from different fields must be independent from one another that's one requirement actually for the ANOVA to be even applicable okay now for one way ANOVA I should say okay because there is such thing as two way ANOVA and that's basically an equivalent of matching pairs but instead of pairs now you have um more than just two observations right population sample one and sample two there are actually k samples so they're not called matched pairs they're called uh blocks okay so block of observations first line for each uh for each sample represent matching values and this is called a block so it's not a matched pairs it's a block okay and in this case you're dealing with two-way ANOVA but we're not going to uh, consider that example we're going to just concentrate on one-way ANOVA so the bottom line is that one-way ANOVA is uh applicable when samples that you are collected from your k different populations are independent from each other okay uh all right so i'm not going to go into the details actually how the test works because that will only uh obscure things probably and make them a little bit boring since this is uh, pretty much an application course let's go straight into the applications okay so i'm going to skip through this uh through uh, all these slides okay all right so let's let's look at this problem uh apple juice company uh so the company that manufactures bottled uh apple juice uh is considering a new product so instead of selling the juice like in big one gallon uh jugs right uh, the company considers actually the product uh, which is called uh, juice concentrate so it's something that you mix with the water right and uh, at the end of that you have the well juice basically okay 
diluted, not concentrated juice anymore. So but they're trying to figure out what would be the best way to advertise this new product to the customers. And their marketing team, so this is a marketing example, the marketing team comes up with the uh, with an idea. How about, we, there are three ways how we can advertise the product to the customers. One can be convenience. For example, concentrate takes less space, right? So you get a can of concentrate, it doesn't take all the space inside the, the fridge, so therefore it's more convenient, right? It's not as large and bulky. Or number two, uh, the juice that you are getting out of concentrate is actually uh, not worse than the regular juice that you buy in the store. So the quality is the same or even better compared to the regular juice. That's another way to advertise. And third way to advertise is the price because concentrate is cheaper, right? Because you're skipping a couple of production phases, you're skipping the bottling, you're skipping the water, you know, uh, which is also an expense, right? Distribution is much cheaper, right? So instead of, you know, moving a one gallon uh, bottle, you're moving just a, a smaller can, right? So you can move more cans. Uh, it's going to be cheaper on the per unit basis, so therefore it results in a lower price, right? So, but which strategy? And th all of these are just different advertising strategies, right? So, we can advertise based on convenience, based on quality, or based on price. So, how do, we th how do they decide? Or is there even a difference between convenience, quality, or price message in your advertising uh, campaign, right? So, here's what uh, the advertising team comes up with. They say, okay, let's do this. Let's uh, go ahead and, uh, let's see, I don't have it on the slides, right? Yeah, so let's go ahead and uh, uh, do this. We're going to select three different cities as our three different um, target markets. So in city number one, we'll distribute our product to the stores and we will uh, run the commercial that will be concentrating on convenience. It's convenient, it takes less space, buy our concentrate. In the second seat, we're going to air another commercial that tells quality is no worse than the regular juice or even better, so go buy it. In the third seat, we're going to advertise based on the, uh, it's cheaper to manufacture, therefore the price is going to be lower, so our concentrate is best, go buy it, okay? And after that, what we're going to do is we will collect um, from a number of stores, big box stores, such as, I don't know, Walmart, Kroger, etc., data uh, on sales, okay? How much money could they generate by selling our product? So therefore, essentially from each of the cities or for each type of the commercial convenience, quality and price, we're going to collect number of observations and then we're going to judge, right? If some of these cities will show uh, higher sales compared to others, that means that uh, strategies, they're really different, right? There, are, uh, there is a better way to advertise, there is a worse way to advertise. But if the sales at the end of the day uh, will be pretty much the same average sales, right? Again, when we say comparing sales, we're, we're talking about comparing the averages. If the average sales are going to be the same from city one, two, and three, we're going to say, doesn't matter which advertising strategy you pick, it all will result in the same level of sales, okay? So therefore, in our case, uh, if you kind of imagine, we have same thing, right? Different uh, populations. Populations are really going to be what commercial based on convenience, commercial based on the quality, and commercial based on the price. These are populations, right? And these represent three different treatments or three different levels of the same factor, which is called advertising strategy. Okay, you have three different advertising strategies. Okay. And how the samples are independently collected? Well, I get a bunch of stores from city one, another completely unrelated bunch of stores from city two, and another completely unrelated to the other two, a uh, bunch of stores from the city number three, right? There is nothing that links observation one, observation one, and observation one in three different columns. In this case, they, uh, it would be uh, blocks as observations, right? Matching blocks as observations. But since I don't pre-cook it in any way, right, I'm just saying, yep, let's just distribute that and see what happens. So I'm dealing with independent samples. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at uh, what uh, are the null and the alternative. I told you that the null is going to be always the same, right? The averages for different 
factor levels or different treatments or different populations it all means the same uh, the averages are equal to each other in other words no matter how you advertise is it based on convenience quality or price the average level of sales is going to be the same okay as opposed to no it's not going to be the same right but there are many many different ways how it can be different for different cities right in city one sales can be higher and in two and three it can be the same right but less than in city one or in all three cities it can be different okay one city is higher another is second highest and the third one is lowest um, so any combination of possibilities uh, is there so therefore uh, when I uh, formulate my alternative I have to kind of formulate something that is opposite of this right my null says that all means are the same my alternative should say no not all the means are the same so how do I uh, phrase that well here is the way to phrase it okay at least two populations are different it can be mu1 is not the same as mu2 it can be mu2 is not the same as mu3 it can be mu1 is different from mu3 it can be all of them are different but no matter what happens at least two have different averages okay and again this is a, a manifestation of the fact that uh, uh, this test is a smoke detector right it will tell you are means the same or are they not the same and if it uh, finds in favor of alternative where not all the means are the same at least two are different which ones are different it will not tell you simple as that okay but the upside of this test is instead of comparing one versus two one versus three two versus three so performing three separate tests here you're going to do it in one test okay so this is what we're testing really okay because we have three treatments or three levels of the factor advertising strategy i'm going to say three treatments have the same average if we treat cd1 with advertising based on convenience cd2 with advertising based on quality and cd3 advertising based on price uh, regardless of the strategy that we pick the average sales in all three cities are going to be the same an alternative is going to be at least two advertising strategies produced statistically different average sales uh sale results okay so now these are my old slides i'm going to redo them so let's go ahead and switch to um our studio right but before we switch to our studio uh, before we start actually doing our um anova let me uh explain a very important concept okay so uh well first of all let's let's go ahead and read the uh, read the file okay or even before that actually let me show you something uh in statistics oftentimes when we're uh, we're doing the anova test okay uh we need uh to deal with the special form of data which is called stacked all examples that we did so far uh we were dealing with unstacked data what does that mean that means that for example i have population one population two they belong in different columns right column one column two that was normal for us so uh in order for us to perform the anova we have to stack our data so in other words we have to take column one put it on the top of column two and then uh, on the top of that add the column three here is uh let me illustrate that for you okay so uh here is notepad okay remember uh about what 15 lectures ago or so no it's actually it was close to 20 lectures ago we discussed csv files comma separated files right so here's what i'm going to do i'm going to create a very simple two column data set okay so and i'm going to call them uh and give them names column one and column two and in column one column one i'm gonna have numbers one uh two and three all right and in column two i'm gonna have numbers three four and uh five okay so like this pretty clear right so this is my csv file but first i have to save it as the csv file so i'm gonna save it as my uh traditional folder data 
but I have to save it as the CSV file. So I'm gonna save it as uh, unstacked data, okay, unstacked. That means data are recorded in separate columns. Each column contains its own sample, okay, unstacked, bam. All right, so uh, did I save it as CSV? I don't remember, quite frankly, hold on. Hold on. Uh, no, I didn't, right? I made a boo boo, so let me delete that. Okay, and let me now save it as it should be. File save as all data, so I'm going to call it unstack.csv, right? It's going to be comma separated values, so I'm going to save it. And uh, let me just keep it open. All right, so um, first things first, I'm going to say unstacked data right so i'm not going to do any anova analysis right now i'm just going to demonstrate for you what staking means right unstacked data is i'm going to read the file that i just created so it's drive c folder data and it's called unstacked.csv like this right so let me go ahead and show that data okay so it should look pretty much exactly like what i entered uh, okay, that's not it. Unstack data. There you go. Okay, yep. That's what it looks like. That's what I entered, right? Column one. One, two, three. Column two. Three, five, four. Hold on. I thought it's different, no? Oh, no. So, okay, let me change that. Four, five, six. Four, five, and six. Sorry about that. I'm going to save it again. And, yeah, that's why I kept it open in case I screw up. All right, so I'm going to read it again, and now it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? Column 1, 1, 2, 3, column 2, 4, 5, 6. Okay, cool. That's unstacked because there is column 1 and there is quite separate column 2. So, when I stack the data, uh, it will put numbers 1, 2, 3 on the top, and right under them it will put numbers 4, 5, 6. But I have to remember, well, not me, but, you know, my my data set has to remember that actually numbers one two and three they come from column one and numbers four five six they come from column two okay so uh all the numerical data will go in in only one column it's going to be one two three four five six one on the top of another right but in the column right next to that it's going to be kind of an indicator column it will say uh each data point where did it come from so uh, data one comes from call one data two comes from call two right data point three comes from call three four comes from call two five and six also from call two so and let me show you how easy it is to stack the data using r so here i had unstacked data guess what i'm going to create stacked data and the function that does that is stack okay very straightforward so i'm gonna stack data go ahead and stack the unstacked data like this okay so when i run this line now um it's done deal right so let's take a look at what's inside my stack data so when i run this line and there you go that's what the stack data looks like so values one two three that's column one and here is my indicator that it is column one and then four five six they come from column two here is the indicator that says so okay so i didn't lose or didn't gain anything i had two columns and i still have two columns okay um from that standpoint but all the numerical values are placed in one column and guess what if i have three columns or four columns or five columns all the numbers they're, they're going to be stacked in column one and column number two will contain the indicator so Regardless of how many populations or treatments I have in my data, they're always going to be stacked in two columns. So first column uh, will contain the values, and you can see that the uh, function stack actually gives the names, right, to my columns. So column number one is called values, and that is always going to be the case. Each time when I stack columns, the one, the first one that contains the values, numerical values, is called exactly that, values. And the column number two is always called IND, which means index, right? Or um, 
indicator, right? It indicates what was the original column name, where that data point came from. I think it's, it's fairly straightforward, right? Self-explanatory. Okay, so uh, this is my uh, small bit. I'm going to put um, put the comment here. How to stack data using R, right? Using R. Okay. So now to our example. Let's go. Okay. So now uh, we're going to analyze analyze advertising strategy advertising strategy effect on sales right that's what essentially we're doing okay so the data i believe are saved in the file which is called advertising so therefore ads uh, data right i'm gonna uh, keep it brief adds data let me go ahead and read the csv file c data advertising dot csv okay now let me go ahead and look at the data right so this is where the structure function becomes handy adds data all right so it says data frame we have 20 observations so each column let me show you actually where is my uh, data it's right here so the advertising data is right here so when i double click that okay there okay in the city number one i collected data from 20 different stores right same thing happened in the city number two and city number three they were treated with different commercials right that's what the data looks like and what that's what my uh data frame tells me there are 20 observations and there are three columns three variables right convenience advertising strategy quality and price okay now before going much further let's stack the data because i told you that before we do any type of hypothesis testing we have to uh well actually you know what before even before doing that let's actually be meticulous about that right so let's not jump the gun i'm going to uh kind of stick with the tradition and our tradition uh right now is that each time when we learn a new test we're going to see how this test fits into the roadmap, right? The map of our course. So I'm comparing, describing a population. No. Do I compare two populations? No. Do I compare three or more populations? Yes. That's what I'm doing, right? Data type. Numerical. Clear, right? Experimental design. And here I have three different options, right? It can be independent samples. That's the only way, uh, one that we're going to uh, actually discuss in this lecture. Or it can be blocks. That's kind of, I, I told you before, right? That's equivalent. So independent samples are independent samples. It ba basically, it says everything, right? We have three different advertising strategy. From each strategy, we're, we're getting uh, a sample of stores, right? Uh, a sample of sales from different stores. And stores are not linked with each other anyhow they're not part of the same chain they they're not matched by the size nothing okay it's just basically a random bunch of stores so our samples are independent but if we're matching stores somehow right for example by the size right first line for example all big stores with the uh, with the uh, uh, you know uh, floor area of at least i don't know five thousand square feet okay uh we're not matching anyhow right so our samples are independent but if i do match somehow that becomes a block design okay so but we're not doing block and we're not doing blocks with replications all right so that's the only thing that we're doing in this course independent samples and then again the question as always becomes how are samples distributed if they're normally distributed then i'm doing one way ANOVA. that's what we're discussing today in this lecture but if my at least one of my samples is not normal then i have to use a non-parametric test which is called cross call wallis test so now next important question is i have to test my samples uh for normality okay each one of them so let's go ahead and do so there i have three samples right so i'm going to do same thing as before i'm going to do the histogram hist for the first one so it adds data 
And the first one is convenience. That's the histogram. And it looks okay. Not super great, but okay. So Shapira test, right? Shapira Wilkes test. Uh, adds data uh, convenience. And I'm looking for the high p-values, right? By now we're probably pretty much used to that, right? I'm testing normal data versus non-normal data, and the data are normal only if the p-value is high, more than 0 0.05. 0 0.93. So the first sample is normal. Done. Okay, second sample. Uh, adds data uh, quality, based on quality. This is the histogram. Um, it's not super normal, but it's not super bad as well. So let's see what Shapiro says. Adds data based on the quality. And my p-value is 0 0.80, clearly higher than 5% p-value. So this is statistically normal distribution. Good. Next one, histogram of adds data. And the last column is called price. Yeah, I don't know about this one. Obviously, this is a bimodal distribution, right? But it could be like, you know, 20 observations, right? That's nothing, really. That's, that's, you can't even call it statistic, right? So, it's a very small sample, actually. So, let's see if Shapiro test tells that this is a fairly normal data. Which might be, actually. So, adds data uh, based on the price. And my p-value for normality test is 0 0.609, higher than 5%, so therefore even third sample, even though it looked like it's not exactly normal, it might be a little ugly, uh, it's still statistically normal. So I have a green light, right? So all three independent samples pass the normality test. And here is my answer. Uh, I'm testing really if all samples have the same average, so I'm using one way ANOVA, right? And one way again, because I'm testing only for one factor. So the question is, does the advertising strategy, which is a factor here in this study, does the advertising strategy affect the average sales? So, okay, let me go back to uh, our studio, right? So here's what I'm testing really. My null hypothesis is that my null hypothesis is that mu for uh, convenience is the same as mu for quality is the same as mu for price. Right? So in other words, advertising strategy does not affect the average sales. Regardless of what you pick, you're going to end up with the same average sales. And my alternative, we discussed that uh, alternative always says that at least two are different, right? So at least two uh, add strategies result in different average sales. All right. And which two again? I'm not going to be able to see. Well, I will kind of be able to see. I'll show you, okay? How exactly do I do that? All right. So. Uh, but I told you that before we do any kind of testing, I have to stack my columns, right? So um, I have to take the data in this form, unstacked, as it exists right now, right? And I have to stack the data. Actually, let me go ahead and show you. Uh, how can I look at the data? So this is the function that we never used before. Function is called head. It gives me, me the header. So if, for example, I want to look at the um, header, uh, like first few lines okay of my uh, data set I can go ahead and say give me the header of the ads data right that's what I got from my CSV file all right and what it does uh, apparently it gives me six lines by default I know that there are 20 lines right but it gives me for six lines and then it quits so here's what my data looks like convenience column quality column and price column okay so, and I can actually manipulate, for example, if I want uh, 10 lines instead of 6, I believe I can go ahead and say n equals 10, like this. Give me 10 lines, and it'll give me 10 lines, okay? So, it's kind of useful function to see how your data looks like. All right, so now let me, and this is unstacked, right? Each column is in its, uh, uh, its own separate well, column, right? 
each sample in its own separate column. So now let me go ahead and stack the data. So I'm going to call it stacked adds data. All right, and we know that it's going to create two columns, right? First one is going to be with values, and it's going to be called literally values. The second one is going to be the indicator which column it came from. And I'm going to use the function stack. I'm stacking the adds date, my original date, right? All right, let me now look at the stacked uh, adds data. And I'm going to use the same function, head, okay? So let's see, head. Head of stacked adds data, all right? And there it is. So again, by default, it gives me six first lines. So it takes first six observations, and as we can see, they come from the convenience, right? So it says first one was 529, 658, 793, and they all came from convenience, convenience, convenience. But overall, I should have 60, right? 20 from first, 20, and 20 from the others. So how about I'm going to look at all 60 of them. So n equals 60. So show me everything, right? That's what I'm telling. Show me all 60, and that should give me a bunch of them, right? So you can see how the columns are stacked, right? Convenience column goes first, and quality col column goes next, and the price column is the last one, right? That's the end of my data. Okay, and again, the names of the columns are uh, default. They're always the same. Values and IND, which basically stands for indicator. And now I can use ANOVA uh, for... Uh, I can use this data for ANOVA test. Okay, so... Let's go ahead and perform the ANOVA test, right? Run ANOVA test, okay? So, um, first of all, because I formulated hypothesis, right? Since I formulated the hypothesis, um, the result of this ANOVA test should be p-value, right? To choose between null and alternative, I need to have a p-value, simple as that, right? So, uh, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to run the test itself, but the results of the test I'm going to record in a separate variable. That's kind of a little bit awkward concept, right? So far, what we were doing is I read the data set. So, I'm reading data, like literally numbers, right, and column names, and I save them in the variable, which is data frame, right? Uh, or, for example, I want to tabulate certain column, right? So I use the function table and the results I'm recording into the vector, right? So far, it was like dealing with data, right? So our variables were pointing to the actual numbers and data. So this time around, I'm going to create a variable. And in this variable, I'm going to record the model itself, all right? So the results of the test. So that's something kind of unusual. We never had that before, right? So I'm going to say ANOVA um, model, okay, for the lack of a better term. So it's the, and the function is called AOV. It's an abbreviated version of ANOVA, right? A, analysis, O is off, and V, variant, uh, analysis of variance, right? AOV. AOV. Here is what I'm testing, really. Okay. Uh, here is what I'm building the model. I'm trying. So remember, all my values were placed in the column, literally called values, right? And all of my indicators, which uh, which column this value came from, are placed in the column always called IND, ind, right? So and this is what I'm doing. I'm saying values, and I have to say tilde. IND. Okay, so essentially what I'm saying here is go ahead and compare values that correspond to different uh, indicators. All right, so this is kind of a little unusual. So uh, in other words, ANOVA will uh, what what the test will do is it will separate all the uh, values that correspond to the IND convenience and it will separate all the values that correspond to the indicator quality and all values that correspond to the indicator of price. So it will have three separate columns of data and that will do the all the internal things, okay? And quite frankly, I got to tell you that um, at one point in time when I was teaching the uh, introductory statistics course, 
it was just once okay i made an experiment i wanted to show students how the test is performed so the nitty-gritty pretty much like what we did with chi-squared test not so long ago right in the last lecture remember we discussed chi-squared test for independence right and i pretty much showed you how the test is done right you create the uh, cross table with actual frequencies and you uh, calculate the expected frequencies if the null hypothesis is true then you calculate the chi-squared value subtract frequencies minus expected squared divided by expected add together across different categories then you take a look at the chi-squared function look in the right tail and that's your p-value right so step by step this is how the test is done so i wanted to do exactly the same thing for this test okay for the uh, ANOVA i got to tell you it was a royal failure okay it was epic screw up because i spent literally a week dealing with simplest example and i'm sure students were lost on day number one so the rest of the week i was like i realized actually that students were lost but i, I couldn't just stop and say yeah you know what let's just let's just do it okay i don't want to show you the internal workings of this test so my point here is that the test even though it's very simple right so this is how the test is formulated all the means are the same versus at least two are different from each other it's a very easy test on the outside but internal workings of the test are extremely painful actually so therefore let's not even try that okay so here's what i'm doing right i'm trying to see if the values in different columns correspond to different indices give you same means or different means right and the only thing that i have to uh, provide now is the data set itself right i didn't say i didn't tell the aov analysis of variance functions function uh, which data so if i run it like this nothing's going to happen okay so it says yeah you're referring to the column values but where is it okay what what do you mean my friend so i have to say which data to use right so i'm going to say data equals and i want to use stacked data right that's the reason the whole reason why i created this variable actually in the first place i'm going to say use the stacked advertising data and now now i got my model okay uh, so the test is done and the results are recorded actually inside this variable which i called anova model so now let me go ahead and show them to you my friends and that is done by calling the function summary actually it's kind of uh it's uh, uh, the uh, the way how we perform the anova test is very handy because uh in the next uh three four maybe even five i don't know lectures we're going to discuss extremely important model which is called linear regression we're going to discuss two flavors simple linear regression and multiple regression and that will give you actually so uh, the regression is done pretty much in the same exact way so we're first of all we're building the model the regression model and the the way how the function is done is exactly that that is my dependent variable and these are my independent variables here okay and then after that if i want to see the result of my model i have to call the function summary so this is kind of a preview of what we're going to be doing in the next few lectures anyhow uh, so i want to show the summary of my anova model and there it is okay and the most important outcome is right here probability greater than f so this test is using actually another distribution which we did not discuss and we're not gonna uh, it uses the uh, f distribution okay so so far in this class we covered actually a few distributions right we started with normal and uh, a special case of normal called standard normal that was the first thing right and then we said well t distribution is used in t test when you're testing hypothesis about population when you don't know anything about that including standard deviation that's when t test came in right and t distribution just recently in the last couple of lectures we discussed uh, a new distribution which is chi squared which is used when you're dealing with nominal data it's either goodness of fit test or test for independence variable x from variable y right and now here is the new one for you there is very popular distribution which is used for uh, ANOVA test which is called F distribution okay and again just like in chi squared we calculate the F value which is right here 3.23 all right and after that you calculate the p value which is area in the right tail of the f distribution so conceptually uh 
uh, F test is not much different from the chi-square test. Okay, so you're always looking in the right tail distri of distribution. So bottom line is p-value for our test right here is 0 0.0468. So now I can conclude my my test, right? So uh, p-value equals 0 0.0468. Four six eight, okay, and this is less than my standard significance level point of five, right? So the four uh, samples uh, provide enough evidence to reject now in favor of alternative of H one, right? So therefore, what does that mean? My alternative says that at least two strategies result in different uh, average uh, sales, right? So in plain English, uh, different strategies, right? Different ad strategies give different average sales, right? That's quite literally what it means. I now was saying that no matter what strategy you pick, the average sales are going to be the same. Well, I rejected now. So that means that different strategies provide different sales. And again, this uh, test, so this is going to be the last one because we're already over the time limit, right? Uh, anyhow, so the test tells me that strategies are different from each other. But because it's a, a smoke detector, right? Uh, it tells you that there is a fire, but it doesn't tell you exactly where the fire is, right? So this is where the test is, right? Uh, the, the, where, where, where the test ends, okay? It does not tell you which strategy is best. Is it be better on the price, advertising on the price, on the convenience? What? What's going on? So, uh, in this case, here's what I, I can do. Okay, To get an idea, graphical idea, visual idea of what strategies can be better or worse than others, I can plot three different histograms, right? And and, and look at the, uh, at the data distribution, okay? So, uh, or in other way, how I can view the data is box plots. Now, reminder, here's what box plot looks like. Box plot is based on something that uh, we discussed earlier, much earlier. It's called five number summary, right? Every numerical data set, and these are all numerical data sets, uh, it can be characterized uh, by... Um, uh, it can be uh, characterized by uh, uh, five numbers, right? A minimum number. Q1, first quartile, Q2, median, Q3, third quartile, and the max. Okay, And the box plot basically is exactly that. So let me show you, for example, how the box plot looks for the first strategy, which is convenience. Right. So I can say, go ahead and plot me the box plot for ads data, convenience. Okay, box plot. Sorry, box plot. Yeah, that's what the box plot looks like, right? So it says that this is your mean, whatever that is, right? Uh, I don't know, 320. This is your Q1. This is your median. This is your Q3. That's your max. Okay. So if I want to compare how three distributions look like one by another, here's what I can do. I can go ahead and say, please give me the box plot. Uh, like this, plot me adds data versus, uh, no, 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 adds data, hold on, um, uh, no, I'm going to use the, uh, the, the stack data, okay, so plot me the values, right, again, reminder, the, uh, the stack data looks like that, first column is values, these are the numbers, and second column is indicator, right, which column they came from. So plot me the values versus indicator. Okay, IMD. But again, if I leave it like that, it's not going to understand. It's going to say, oh, okay, great. You want values versus the indicator, convenience, quality, price, but where is that? What, what, what data do I need to, to use? So I have to say data equals, and here I'm using step, right? Step data there you go okay and when I plot and when I run this line you can see that it does uh, it kind of separates all three different see when I stack the data I kind of pile them all together right uh, all the numbers were piled in the column values all the 
column names were piled in the column IND indicator, right? So uh, when I run the box plot like this, when I'm using stacked data, it kind of reverses this operation, right? It says, okay, now let's separate first treatment, convenience, and plot the box plot, then separate the second one, and separate the third one, right? So uh, this is kind of informal assessment, right? Again, what we uh, what we saw in our um, ANOVA test, p-value is less than alpha, so therefore reject the null. Not all the uh, advertising strategies are the same, right? So some are better than others, and this is kind of informal way how we can judge which ones are better and which ones are worse. So from this, I can probably say it's kind of hard, right? I can say that it looks like quality is the best strategy, right? Is quality that different from price? Eh, probably not that much, right? Because if you kind of if you imagine that you shift the price slightly higher, right, by a smidge, then uh, you will have both distributions at about the same level, right? So therefore, quality and the price probably are not that greatly different. But if you compare quality and convenience, then you can see that uh, convenience actually results in a lot of sales on the low end of spectrum, right? So maybe the real difference is between the quality and the convenience. So in other words, now I have this uh, box plot right here. Uh, I can pretty much uh, informally judge uh, which advertising strategies maybe I want to compare one by one, right? One versus another, that's what I mean. So quality and the convenience, if I compare just this pair against each other, probably I'll find that the average for the quality is higher, the sales average sales for the quality advertising is higher than the average sales for the convenience advertising, okay? But that uh, that is just based on the picture alone, okay? So the test, the test does not give me any indication which can be better or which strategy can be worse okay so ladies and gentlemen this is analysis of variances it turns out to be a pretty long lecture but uh, that's it and uh, the next one that we're going to look at is going to be simple linear regression